Hi everybody, this is Corey, and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. Thank you so much for being here. Really excited to share a new video with you. If you are not already subscribed, please be sure to hit the little subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell so you get notified every single time I upload a new video. And please, if you would, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. To my subscribers, thank you so much for being here. Your support means the world to me. And let's go ahead and get started with today's projects. Here we go with DIY number one. So for this, we are going to need a tape measure. We are going to need some burlap. This is um, something I got at Hobby Lobby. It was $14.99 originally, but I got it 50% off. So it was about $7.50 and a pair of scissors. So this is a super, super easy project, you guys. It can really even hardly be called a DIY, but I'm gonna be measuring out about seven and a half feet of this um, burlap fabric because I'm gonna be using this on my dining room table as a runner and it's a rather long table and I want six inches overhang on either end. So I'm snipping the end and then I'm going to follow that strand all the way down so that I know where I want to cut on the opposite end. I'm sorry this is a little out of frame but I'll snip the other end and then I'm going to pull that string out and this is a trick I learned from Crafting Cousins. It you can see there creates a place where you can cut through and have a straight line. So Many thanks to those ladies for that tip. So you'll see that this burlap is bound all the way around the edges. So what I'm gonna do is cut that binding off all the way around the perimeter because what I'd like to do is give this a rustic look. So I'm going to be um, pulling out some of the strings along the perimeter. So in order to do that, we're going to have to cut all of this away. So once that is done, I just decided how wide I wanted that fray edge to be. And I went ahead and pulled that out. And then I went back and counted the number of strands that I had pulled out and went ahead and counted off the same number of strands to pull away all the way around. And it wasn't exactly perfect because the edges weren't completely perfect when I cut away that binding. So I just did my best to try to keep it consistent all the way around the piece of the burlap. And you'll see in a minute where it was um, very obviously not the same width. I just went ahead and cleaned that up with a pair of scissors to just make it a little bit more consistent. Um, but this is by no means something that needs to be perfect. It's meant to be rustic and have that farmhouse look. So here you can see, I'm just gonna clean that up a tad because it was quite obvious to me that um, it was uh, not even close to being straight and I wanted that to be a little bit uh, closer. about this that was just so satisfying to me and I'm even enjoying watching it back so just letting you all watch how I did this. And that's it. Easy project, right? And then we have our runner. DIY number two. For this, I have a piece that I got from the Goodwill for 99 cents. It's a brown pottery piece. This also was from the Goodwill for 99 cents. It looked like a little pumpkin to me, so I thought that uh, that was perfect. And then we're also gonna be using some sheepskin of the home decor chalk paint and Waverly chalk paint in celery. So I'm just going to get my pieces from the Goodwill cleaned up, get those little tags, stickers off of them, and then I'm going to give them a good wipe down with my little baby wipes that I like to have on hand and get everything all cleaned up because 
never know where things came from when you pick them up at the thrift store. So always good to just make sure they're nice and clean before you get started on your project. So then I went in and for my base, I used the sheepskin paint and I gave this ultimately three coats because I just wanted to make sure that that brown was completely covered. Just a little trick that I got from Heidi at um, Heidi Sambol to wrap that up in a baby wipe while you're uh, waiting for your paint to dry if you know that you're going to be going back in and doing another coat. So then using the celery on the little pumpkin and I believe that one I also gave three coats. Um, I find that the Waverly chalk paint is not quite as thick as the folk art chalk paint and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's just um it just goes on differently so i think i did end up giving that three coats as well now i thought that i wanted to give the base a little bit of a trim at the bottom so i added in that celery but i wasn't happy with the way that it was looking i don't know it felt like 80s to me or something and i just wasn't happy with the um, the line that I was getting there either so I was yeah not happy with it so I just went back in and I tried to wipe it off a little bit first but it was already starting to dry so I covered it back up with some more of the sheepskin I was much happier with that and then I took what was left on my brush and just added a little bit of that sheepskin to the pumpkin on all of those bump ups for the pumpkin or what I'm using as my pumpkin or considering it to be a pumpkin. Um, so just used more of a dry brushing technique. I didn't reload my paintbrush. I was just using what was left on there, giving a little bit more interest. And then I ran it along the top as well. I had this ribbon that I had gotten from Costco a couple of years ago during the holidays and it's kind of rustic looking but at the same time it's got that gold thread running through it. I don't know if you could be rustic and gold at the same time but if, if you can be this ribbon is it. So I just did a very simple bow around the top and then I'm going to trim the ends and just dovetail them by holding the ribbon in half and cutting it at an angle. Just give it that nice finished edge. And then I fluffed the bow a little bit more and decided that one tail was a little too long, so I just trimmed that up a little bit more. And there you have it. I thought this was so cute, and it just looks so nice on that little base, that little pedestal. And just wait, you guys, until you see it all put together on my dining room table with some florals in it. Isn't that adorable? I love it. DIY number three. So these are some pumpkins I saw at Hobby Lobby and we're gonna try and make a dupe of this. So I was optimistic in putting out three pumpkins. I ended up doing just one, but these are the foam pumpkins from Dollar Tree. Also grass hula skirts from Dollar Tree. This is the kid size and uh, we'll be using some hot glue as well. I ended up using two of the hula skirts. Um, also had some little birch wood pieces that I was showing you there, but we're going to take the grass skirt and divide it into six strands with two sections in each strand, if that makes sense. So I'm just braiding this. So I basically have two of these little sections for each of my braid strands and braiding it all the way down. And once that was done, I just slid it off and I used glue, hot glue to secure the ends at either end, actually. And so I just worked my way down the grass skirt, doing that all the way down. And these are the little braids that I ended up with. 
So once I had that all done, I went back and just trimmed off the frayed ends, for lack of a better term, and got those all ready to attach to the pumpkin. So then I am just getting the pumpkin prepared and taking off the little top and it's on there pretty secure and that little wire didn't want to come off so I ended up using my wire cutters and now I did intend to paint the pumpkin first but I was all excited about my little project and all of these um, braided raffia from the, the grass skirt that uh, I got a little bit ahead of myself and just started uh, putting them right on there. So if you're going to try this project, I highly recommend painting the pumpkin first um, because I do realize eventually um, that it is necessary and because uh, otherwise you can see the orange coming through in between and it's just not as attractive as um, having just that creamy base underneath. So I'd started putting them on, just trimmed away the, the braids after I had them glued on there. I was really trying to work out the best way to do this and I found that it was really better to cut them as I went versus leaving them all on there and cutting them at the end. this is where I started considering, you know what, I meant to paint this thing. And I was like, well, you know what, maybe it'll be okay. Let me just keep going for a little bit. And yeah, no. So as it starts getting a little bit tighter, obviously not every single strand is going to be able to go all the way up to the top. So I just started clipping it at an angle and fitting it in there. And the cool thing about the raffia or the grass skirt, whatever you want to call it, um, it was pretty much staying in that braided form for the most part, even when I was clipping it, which really helped with the with the project because it didn't just try to unravel. But you can see how you can see that orange in between. And I was kind of trying to push them together to see if I was gonna be able to get away with it and realized, yeah, no, it, it really isn't working. So I went back in with the sheepskin chalk paint. I did not bore you with that because it was really challenging to get it in between all of those little braids that I had already put in there, but I managed and you can see it's a much better look. And I know some of you are probably wondering why I don't have my finger protectors on when it's sitting like right there. And I had them on and off for this. I just, I find that sometimes it's difficult to feel the uh, material that I'm working with. And I like just having my fingers right on it. So yeah, I, I risk burning myself sometimes, but it was worth it to me. But isn't that cute the way it's turning out? I'm really enjoying uh, the process of doing this. just using shorter strands to work them in. I was a little worried about how it would look, but it, it actually worked out really well by using those shorter strands in between. So now I'm going to be taking a little birch stick from the Dollar Tree. I'm just looking for one that I like, one that looks like it'll fit on there pretty nicely, and I'm just using a whole bunch of hot glue to secure that as well. Now you can leave it like this. I think it's super cute but the original had some of those little stick things so i have these 
for lack of a better term, witches brooms around my house that I bought last year. Um, they were at the grocery store and they smelled like cinnamon, but the scent was starting to fade. Although as I started pulling this away, I smelled the cinnamon again, which was really nice. Um, but I thought, you know what, maybe I can break these apart and use them to create that little vine that was growing up around the pumpkins that I saw at Hobby Lobby. So just taking the whole thing apart and trying to see which part of this I can use because only part of it is really super pliable. Other parts of it um, would snap if I tried to bend them too far. So I was working out a process of how to get them in there. And originally I was just trying to stick it in between the braided raffia um, and then just using hot glue on the bottom. I found that that was challenging to get it to hold. So eventually I took a skewer and I started punching holes in the carvable pumpkin. I just did it right in between the um, braided strands and found places where I could stick it in there. And then I would, did go back and secure it with hot glue as well, but it just, I found, gave it a little bit better of a hold. So I would create my little hole, punch my hole in there, trim off the, I don't even know what you call this, twigs for lack of a better term, and then push it down inside that hole and then go back and secure it with some hot glue just to make sure that it wasn't gonna be popping out. And then I was using my little wire cutters to just trim up some of that extra fray that was sticking out a little bit too much for my taste. DIY number four. So this is another simple project using chargers from the Dollar Tree. I have two different kinds here because I just picked up four of each for whatever reason. And then I have this heirloom white Rust-Oleum spray paint. I love this color. And then we'll be using the gold Sharpie paint marker as well. So I'm going to take these outside and spray paint them. And here they are. So this one is very plain and this one has um, a little pearl buppy edge. I don't know what you'd call that along the edge of it. So we're going to take advantage of that and highlight that on the bumpy edged plates. And for the smooth plates, I'm just going to use the gold paint marker and do an edge all the way around each plate. one and you can make that edge as thick or as thin as you'd like so I just wanted something nice and, and relatively delicate very classic looking and then for the little plate chargers with the bumpy edge I'm just really going through and using that gold paint pen to uh, to highlight those little dots around the perimeter of the chargers. So there you go. Very simple, understated, but I think super pretty. DIY number five. So these fun little candlesticks were picked up at the Goodwill as well, 99 cents a piece. And then I have some pieces of wood from Hobby Lobby. These came in a pack of four for $2.99, I believe. 
So I probably should have sanded them down first, but I ended up doing that after I started painting them. So uh, you don't want to be like me. You want to take the time to actually sand it first. <laughs> I was being a little bit lazy, but um, I'm going to glue these candlesticks onto my bases. I'm using Gorilla Glue and I'm going to apply it to most of the edge and then I'm going to set it down on there and then pull it away because with this Gorilla Glue, if you watched my last video, um, you'll know that you're supposed to apply it to both surfaces that you want to glue together and then let those surfaces start to dry for a couple of minutes. So I'm just pressing it down on there so that I can see where the glue needs to go on the wooden pieces um, for setting it back down again later so that it all is where I need it to be, if that makes sense. So once those had sat for a couple minutes, I went ahead and put them on the bases. Now I went ahead and tried to glue the pottery together like this as well, um, and then used a little bit of hot glue for that immediate hold. You guys, this did not end up holding. After I painted it, I was I went back in for my second um, coat and it came apart. So I ended up having to use super glue and I used the Dollar Tree super glue, which I'll be showing you in a, a few minutes, but um, that actually worked really well and it was put together really nicely and I don't think it's going to be coming apart. So I'm going to be using the Elephant Chalk Paint by Waverly, as well as my Adirondack White. And with the Elephant, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of paint all over the candlestick. two coats of paint on it and here I'm showing you that it's pretty solid now that I've got it glued back together again and this is the super glue that I got from Dollar Tree and it's four to a pack and this stuff really worked well on the ceramic so very happy and then I've got my chip brush from the Dollar Tree as well as my Adirondack white and the little bottle is starting to run low so it made it easy just to get a little bit of paint on my brush so I can use that dry brushing technique um, when I have more paint on there than what I want you'll see that I just kind of dab it on my parchment paper that I use as my surface protector and I like the parchment paper because it uh, doesn't really stick to the project so there you have it DIY number six so we're going to be using a sharpie paint marker in gold another foam pumpkin from the dollar tree our chalk paint in sheepskin i have imperial chalk paint and then i'm showing you my black chalk paint i actually ended up using java instead but i'll talk about that some more in a minute so taking off the little stem trimming off the little wire piece that gets stuck in there that doesn't want to come out and I'm going to give the pumpkin a couple of coats of the sheepskin paint. So once we have it painted, we're going to use the gold Sharpie paint pen and I'm going to draw lines all through the pumpkin and we're going to make a grid pattern. And this is something that I've seen Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home do quite a bit. Um, she talks a lot about this one style and all I can think of is childs right now, you guys. I'm losing my mind, but there is a designer out there that does um, like plates and all different types of um, decor pieces that has this kind of um, checkerboard pattern to it. Oh my gosh, tell me in the comments what the name of it is because it's just not coming to me right now. Forgive me because I do know what it is. I just 
my brain is not uh, firing on this one for me right now. But anyway, um, taking this idea to duplicate what Olivia had done and creating the checkerboard pattern that will come in and paint in a minute. So I pretty much divided the pumpkin in half for that cross line and now I'm dividing those sections in half again to have my little checkers be somewhat um, uniform. And just checking to make sure I have the right number that I need to alternate and going to take my Imperial, I'm showing you my black again, but I'm gonna use the Java instead. And essentially what I wanted was a burgundy color. So I'm gonna be mixing these two pink colors. And at first I was thinking the black would do it for me, but then as I was uh, working on the project, I was thinking about it and I thought, you know what, the brown is probably gonna be a better solution for what I'm looking to get color wise. So this is the Java chalk paint by Folk Art. So I'm just mixing in a sufficient amount of paint, adding a little bit more of the brown until I'm getting to the color that I want. I'm just going to go in and paint every other little square, if you will. I know they're not technically squares, but you know what I mean. So I'm going to alternate that along each row and also from row to row. So hopefully that makes sense and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. see what I'm doing there and once it's all done this is what we have and it's okay if it isn't absolutely perfect in the lines because we're gonna go back through with the Sharpie paint pen now in gold and just going to trace over those lines again and I'm filling in the rectangles if you will on the white edges as well at the top and bottom. I had left that alone just in case and I'm glad that I did because this way I was able to make sure that it was all lined up with wherever I left off with the burgundy paint or maroon paint um, all along those top and bottom edges. So I was pleased with the way that I had done that. So you can see the gold in there in between. pretty. I was pleased with that. I'm loving these colors. So now I'm going to be using another of those little birch sticks from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to attach that on there with some hot glue. And then I'm going to be using some buffalo check ribbon that I also got from Hobby Lobby. Got this on sale. I always like getting everything on sale, guys. I don't like paying full price for anything. And just doing a really simple knot on that. Not even tying a bow, just a simple tie. Gonna dovetail the ends, and this is a wired ribbon, so I can kind of place it however I think looks best. So just bending those little flaps over a little bit. And there you go. Isn't that sweet? I love it. DIY number seven. So for this, we are gonna be using our sheepskin chalk paint again, as well as another foam pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and a couple of ceramic pumpkins also from the Dollar Tree. 
I have this little pedestal that I picked up from the Goodwill for a dollar and then a Dollar Tree vase as well. I have some little scrap pieces of paint sticks from a, another project that I'm going to be using and then also some Dollar Tree picks. So I'm going to be using a bunch more than just that but I'm going to place the scrap pieces from the paint sticks inside this little base because I'm going to be setting my glass vase on top of there and it's just going to provide a little bit more stability because it does fit pretty well on top of this metal um, pedestal if you will but it was kind of not a hundred percent staying exactly the way I wanted it so I just wanted to have this extra support and have something more to be able to attach it to so got that all cleaned up and somehow I missed the footage there on gluing it down but essentially I just used a bunch of hot glue and glued that in I made sure that the little wooden pieces were secure and uh, and then placed the glass vase on top so obviously you can see I'm giving the foam pumpkin a couple of coats of paint here's my trusty heat gun again because zero patience here on throwing paint and then also painting the little green ceramic pumpkin with the sheepskin color as well and now I've got my Waverly chalk paint and pumpkin and going to paint my little white pumpkin. I know it's kind of ironic. I just painted the other two this color and now I'm painting this one orange, but it's the way that I wanted it as far as um, stacking my pumpkins for the topiary. And this is another uh, design idea that I got from Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home. So many thanks to Olivia for the ideas. So I'm using the Java chalk paint here on the pedestal that had been put together and just going to give it um, two coats of the Java chalk paint. about the inside of it there because you won't see those little um, things through the bottom when we're done so there we go so the outside is completely painted nice and we've got our pumpkins that are all ready to go for our topiary I'm gonna use some floral foam and just trim off the little corners of that so it sits in there nice the bottom and then for my pumpkin that base pumpkin we're going to be getting a skewer there we go and I'm going to jam that into the bottom of the foam pumpkin these are carvable as well supposedly so they are hollow inside just so that you know um, so super light as well and then trimming off the skewer and going to press that down into the floral foam just to keep it in place now I'm not gluing that down inside I just want to be able to change it out if I decide to later on for a different season or whatever so um, I did not uh, glue that down inside but I found that it was really pretty secure the way that I had it done anyway so I was fine with that so taking all of my fall foliage and the little picks and sticking those into the floral foam in underneath the pumpkin use anything you want to decorate this you could use berries you could use flowers it doesn't have to be foliage it was just what I had decided I wanted to use for this particular project so I've got some with those little pumpkins I've got a little bit of cotton I've got the fall leaves I've got some little things of the mini cattail it's just a little fun piece so get as creative with it as you want out of frame here but I'm just gonna hot glue on my second and third pumpkins just stack them right on there and these ceramic pumpkins have holes in the bottom of them which make them super easy to stack one on top of each other so that was um, one reason why I'd left the little um, stem on that base pumpkin I thought it would give it more 
to hold on to when I started stacking them. So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of jute cord. I decided I wanted to wrap that around the base of where the glass met the metal because there was a teeny tiny gap. You can't see it on the um, screen and probably wouldn't even notice it otherwise, um, even in person, but I knew it was there, it was bothering me. So little tiny rustic bow. There you go, here is our final reveal. So that's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate your support. Please remember, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that little bell. So until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.